Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a tool that causes explosions wherever you click, just like you see in the video here. Let me go ahead and load up a local server, and I can show you how this works with players in the game. Okay, so now I'm going to use my boomstick on the other player, and we'll see what happens. There we go. So this can make a really fun game. So let's see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to do is you want to take whatever tool that you're going to use. So in this case, I just used a wand that I found in the toolbox. But you can either make your own or take one from the toolbox like I did. If you're using one from the toolbox, you may want to delete some of the scripts that come with it so that we can write our own. What I did just to make it a little bit easier is I put the tool in the starter pack so that when the player joins the game, they're automatically going to start with this tool. But if you want to set it out somewhere in the game to pick up for the players, that's fine too. So what you're going to do with your tool is you're going to click on the plus sign and then add a local script. Inside this local script, we're going to start by making a variable for the tool. To do that, we're going to say local tool is equal to script dot parent. We're actually going to be making two different scripts. We're going to be making a local script for the tool and then we're going to be making a script on the server side to actually create the explosions. The reason we're doing that is because there's a separation between the client side and the server side. So even though something happens on the client side we can make the explosions appear but unless we have that appear on the server side as well the other players won't see it. To accomplish that we're going to use remote events. So what we need to do first is actually make that remote event. So under the replicated storage, go ahead and click on the plus sign and then click on remote event. And then what I did is I renamed it to boom event. The reason I renamed it is so that you can use separate remote events for different things in your game. Okay, so now we're going to create a couple different variables. We're going to start by saying local replicated storage. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside of the parentheses, we're going to put replicated storage. Then we're going to make a variable for the remote event by saying local remote event. This is going to be equal to replicated storage colon wait for child. And the reason we're using wait for child is to give it a chance to load into the game before it tries to find it. So inside of the parentheses, we're going to put boom event. After that, we're going to define a function whenever the tool gets equipped. So we'll say tool dot equipped colon connect. And then we're going to connect this with a function. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass the mouse. Inside this function, we're actually going to make another function. And we're going to start off by saying mouse dot button one down. So this is the left part of the mouse. We're going to connect this. So we'll say colon connect. Inside of the parentheses, just like above, we're going to put function. This time we're not going to have any parameters or anything to put inside the parentheses. What we're going to do inside this inner function is actually trigger the remote event by saying remote event colon fire server. And then inside the parentheses is going to be the information we want to pass to the server side. So what we want to tell the server is the position of the mouse so that it can create an explosion at that position. So to get the position of the mouse, we're going to say mouse dot hit with a capital H and then dot P lowercase. So what's going to happen is whenever the player clicks their mouse, it's going to send the position of the mouse to the server. And then what we're going to do in just a second is actually create that explosion at the position that we sent. So to create the other script, we're going to make a script under the server script service. We're going to start off the script with the replicated storage and also the remote event. So rather than retype it, let's just go ahead and take it from this script. So I'm going to copy this and then paste it over here. Next, we're going to define the function that's going to take the position and then create an explosion. So we're going to say local function. The name of the function can be something like boom. 
Inside the parentheses are going to be the parameters that we get from the local script. The first one is going to be an automatic, which is player. That's the player who triggered it, but we're not going to actually use that player variable here. The other one is going to be the position. And that position variable is going to store the information that we sent right here. So the position of the mouse is going to get stored in this variable. So we're going to use that by saying local explosion. It's going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to be creating an explosion. And then we're going to say explosion dot parent is going to be equal to game dot workspace. And then here we're going to set the position by saying explosion dot position. And this is going to be equal to the position variable. Finally, we just need to run this function whenever the remote event gets triggered. And we're going to do that by saying remote event dot on server event. And then we're going to connect this with our function, which is called boom. Okay, and if you noticed, I did two different ways of setting up a function. This method, you define the function and define the event separately. And the other script, we combine those two. So we have the event right here. And then the function is incorporated into that. So whichever way you prefer, you can do it whichever way you want to. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out and make sure everything's working. Okay, so now whenever my player clicks, an explosion occurs at the mouse. And let's go and load up another local server just so we can test it there and make sure it's working there as well. And this time, just so it's fair, I'm going to let the player on the right blow up the player on the left. All right, in three, two, one... Boom. All right, so that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.